Good morning, this is Deepak. So, how are you? Uh, today's question is from Mary Gesh. Mary Gesh. Again, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. G O E T C G O E T S C H. So, Mary asks Regardless of what is fundamental, be it consciousness or matter slash energy, the real question is if individual consciousness survives intact after death. Someone with wealth and also wishful thinking might be inclined to invest in a cryonics uh, contract, in a cryonics contract with a biomedical company that offers whole body freezing uh, and also head only. One might believe they could resist. Uh, one might believe they could resist uh, finding the question, joining the collective consciousness by resurrecting themselves as the individual they were before death. On the other hand, reason should tell consumers that if ultimate reality is spirit, then there is certainly no need to try to live forever. What are your thoughts on this? Okay, so let me answer this very carefully because this is a question that uh, a lot of people ask and it's very important that we get a true understanding of what consciousness is, both individual, collective, universal. Okay, so what is consciousness? Once again, at the cost of being a repetitious but I think this needs to be understood very carefully. Consciousness is that in which all experience occurs, um, is that in which all experience is known, is that out of which all experience is made. So this is a definition from Rupert Spara, a great teacher of non-duality. Consciousness also is the knowing element in every experience. So right now, uh, you are conscious, you're observing me, uh, and that observation as an experience is happening in your consciousness or in your awareness. Okay, so it's happening in your consciousness and awareness. So consciousness is the source of sense perceptions and their interpretations that we call thoughts and the likes and dislikes that occur as a result of that experience, which is also a form of thought. So once again, consciousness is the source of sense perceptions and thought. Okay, and of course emotions are a consequence of that. I like this, I don't like this. So now, once we've got our definitions clear, all those three definitions from Rupert Spira, the knowing element of experience and the source of thought and perception, the next question is, can we see consciousness? Can we um, touch it, taste it, smell it, see it, feel it? Um, as an experience, as a sense experience? An answer is no, <clears throat> because it is the one that's seeing. Answer is, it is the one that is having the experience. So one problem that gets in the way is that uh, people say, well, <clears throat> the brain is the source of consciousness. And this is uh, a, a, a statement that comes from neuroscientists. But I just want to forget whether you're a neuroscientist or not. <clears throat> and just ask a simple question. Can you talk about the brain? Can you describe the brain? Can you um, uh, experience the brain without um, consciousness? The answer is no. Before you can talk about the brain or you can describe it or you can study it, you have to be aware of it. You have to be conscious of it. So consciousness precedes all experience, including the experience of brain, body, or mind, which we call thoughts, or universe, which is also uh, a collection of sense perceptions. 
So before we can even say I am, there has to be the awareness or the presence in which I am can be stated. So if that is clear, let's go to the next step. We can't see consciousness, um, we can't see it as an object of experience because it's the source of experience. And secondly, uh, since we can't see it or experience it, it has to be formless. So if it is formless, then it has no location in space-time. And if it has no location in space-time, it is without birth or death, because it is timeless. That which was never born cannot be subject to death. So I hope this is clear. Yeah, does consciousness survive physical death? Well, physical death is the death of a continuum of experiences that are being born and that die in every moment of time. So physical death is just the termination of what I would call a qualia program. And um, it's like the end of a movie on the screen. Uh, the movie has finished, but the screen is there. So I hope that's clear. So consciousness not being subject to birth is not subject to death also. <clears throat> but now Mary has another question that takes it a little further. And her question is, does individual consciousness survive uh, after death or does it remain intact after death? Well, the individual consciousness is also formless, so it is not subject to birth and death. I hope that should be clear. So what is the individual consciousness? The individual consciousness is a collection of potential memories, desires, or what we call karma, past experiences. And um, these are always, always in latent form before they're actualized. So if I asked you, what did you have for dinner last night? Before I asked you the question, that memory did not exist as such. But when I asked you the question, then that triggered an experience, and that experience can be correlated with a neural correlate in the brain. But before I asked you the question, that memory of what did you have for dinner last night did not exist except in formless awareness as a potential for memory. Similarly, if I ask you, um, um, do you remember your... Uh, childhood experiences? Do you remember the school you went to, or your class teacher, or your siblings, parents, the house you lived in, the bedroom you slept in as a younger person, let's say before 12? You can try that right now, and you have a memory. Where was that memory before I asked you the question? Well, actually it was latent. In Sanskrit it's called a sanskara and that leads to a tendency or desire called vasana that leads to karma, but never mind all that. The memory of your childhood was non-existence till non-existent till I said, do you remember your class, um, your classmates or your school or something from your childhood? So where is that memory now? Okay, that memory is in consciousness and formless awareness. So, in a sense, you don't go anywhere after you die, you're there right now. It's where the memory of last night's dinner is, it's where the memory of your childhood is. In fact, you cannot have any experience of the world without actually going back to fundamental awareness, which is beyond name and form. You can't have any experience, including this experience that you're having, you have to have this experience by going back to the fundamental awareness which is without name and form. Furthermore, this experience that you're having right now, right now, is over as soon as it is born. So when we started this conversation, the Deepak you were seeing is now a memory. Okay, the, what you were experiencing one second ago is a memory. What you were experiencing a nanosecond ago is a memory. So the distance between past, present, and future is not even a nanosecond. Actually, it doesn't exist. It's always now. 
So here is the point. There is only awareness and there is memory that is pulled out from awareness, desire that is pulled out from awareness through intention and through attention. Uh, so all experience is a result of memory. And the memory doesn't exist till you actualize it. Um, by going to the same place that nature goes to create a galaxy of stars, a cluster of nebulas, a rainforest, a human body, or a thought. In fact, all those things that I said, uh, galaxies, nebulas, rainforests, human body, <coughs> flowers, uh, a rose petal, they're all human constructs around a memory of experience that was uh, interpreted as that construct. The construct is a framework, a description, a map, a uh, concept. It's the map, it's not the territory, okay? So now, um, individual consciousness, of course, it survives as the potential for experience because it's there now as the potential for experience. It can't go anywhere. Okay, in a non-local universe, there's no way to go. What comes and goes is experience in the form of what we call body, mind, and the experience of the universe. Okay, so now I hope this is clear. Consciousness uh, doesn't need to survive death because it was never born. Um, consciousness is timeless. Okay, and that which is timeless um, is not subject to birth or death, only experiences. I've said this so many times, but I hope this is becoming clearer by the day. Clearer by the day. Those people who want to freeze themselves and their body, whole body freezing and, uh, you know, just save the head, they do not understand that the body is not a noun, it's a verb, it's an activity, and as an activity, it's just an intermittent stream of sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. Uh, so in the deeper reality, there's no body, okay? There's no mind, there's no universe. These are human constructs around sense perceptions, thoughts, feelings, emotions, etc. The potential for existence is existence. Awareness is existence. Okay, awareness is existence, and it is now. So don't confuse awareness with the experiences that come and go in awareness as uh, the birth and death of sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts in every moment of now, okay? So now I think I've explained any, everything uh, uh, that I needed to, but Sandra Weber is saying, is there a soul and where is the soul in the body? It's the wrong question. Where implies a location in space and a moment in time to something that doesn't occupy space and doesn't exist in time. Where is a wrong question. Even the experience that you're having now is in awareness, so it has no location. Even this experience right now that appears to be in space and time is actually in awareness. So space-time and matter are human constructs for an experience. The experience is happening in formless awareness. So the experience is non-local, even though you are fooled into thinking that it's local because you separate your body from that which you experience. If you realize that there's only one reality, it is awareness, then yes, it manifests as collective, individual, archetypal, universe, and so on. Okay, Effie um, Wakano has shared my video, and so have 13 other people. I deeply appreciate this because we need to expand this conversation. We need to expand this conversation because the fear of death is the most fundamental fear there is. And if you knew reality, then you would never fear death. 
because reality is not in space-time. Space-time, the universe, what we call the universe, our experiences in space, our experiences in that which is not in space-time. Okay, that which is not in space-time is you. So, um, birth and death occur to experience every moment in time. Okay, now Akshay Sharma has a comment. He says, entanglement is the basis of shared state across space-time, can escape black holes, shared intuition, shared consciousness, is all based on quantum entangled states. Okay, now remember, that's a good metaphor, but it's not what we call reality. Okay, quantum entanglement is a mathematical description of oneness. And so any description is not reality. Any description of reality cannot be reality. Okay, it's a model of reality, it's a construct, it's a map, and the map is not the territory. So, the only territory is being and uh, its own excitations as perceptions and thoughts. Okay, Ali Ramsey, so everything does not actually exist, only consciousness exists. If we mean by existence that which is eternal and not in time, then only consciousness exists. Experiences do exist but they come and go um, in the twinkling of an eye, so they have no permanent existence. So we can say, in a sense, that experiences are, um, are um, real only for a fraction of a second, but not real in the real sense. So here are four things that I think maybe will help you. Okay, the first is know that everything that is happening to you right now, including your body-mind, your body-mind is not the subject of experience, but the object of experience, in the same way as uh, a book is or a computer is. They're all objects of uh, existence. You observe your thoughts. The thought is a mental object. The emotion is a mental object. The image is a mental object. The sense perception is a perceptual object, a perceptual experience. So everything that you experience in this moment of time is a result of conditioning of the mind. Therefore, a useful sometimes social construct. Okay, number one. Number two um, is uh, very important that uh, there is no such thing as the separate self. Just like a wave is the ocean and the raindrop is the ocean and the drop of the ocean is the ocean, there is no separation between observer and observed, between seer and scenery, and individual consciousness, collective consciousness, universal consciousness, at the most fundamental level, are one. So the ego, which is a socially induced hallucination of the separate self, is non-existent. Uh, number three, um, awareness, which is the real I of all experience, I, when we say I, that is awareness that is experiencing this body-mind and everything else and other body-minds, that I, that awareness is not in time, so it's not subject to birth and death. And number four, then um, uh, if you can see it, touch it, taste it, smell it, uh, think about it, conceptualize it, imagine it, it's not real. What is real is that which you cannot see, without which there is no seeing. That which you cannot hear, without which there is no hearing. That which you cannot touch, without which there is no touching or texture that which you cannot taste or smell, without which there is no tasting or smelling. That thou art, tattvamasi, aham brahmasmi, I am the universe, you are the universe. So remember those four points and you will be free of all these constructs, you know, cryogenics, head only, saving. Uh, how can you freeze a noun 
you can freeze a noun, but nouns don't exist. And you can't freeze an activity. Verbs can't be frozen. So, um, you know, this whole thing about cryogenics, etc., it's based on a false understanding of reality. Does consciousness survive death? Have I answered your question? The question doesn't mean anything because that which was never born cannot die. Okay, I'm actually going to be flying to New York, so I'll connect from there. Cheers. Read the book, uh, You Are the Universe, if you want to truly understand deeply on this and uh, deeply understand everything that people are talking about, what happened before the Big Bang and you know where did time come from and how did life begin. Read that book, You Are the Universe, and then join the conversation here on discoveringyourcosmicself.com. Take care. I was going to say God bless, but God as we think is a human construct. The only God there is, is the awareness, and it's ultimately your fundamental reality, the divinity that you are, the divinity that you are. Okay, Laura Laid Rickett says, I have the book. Tell me what you think about it after you read it, okay? Nila, Nina Blankenberg, God bless, God bless. Uh, Nina, that means you bless yourself and we all bless each other. Livia says, have a wonderful trip. Thank you, Livia. Sonia Nelson says, we love you deeply. Me too, Sonia. Love you too. Michelle, is there a God? There is only God. Only God. Rachel Nunes says, have a nice trip. I'll get the book. Thanks, Rachel. I'll connect with you. Carmen Sanchez Yoga says, ciao. Safe travels, ciao. Okay. Aline says, thank you for what you're doing. I cannot help what I'm doing. I'm obsessed with it. I want us all to wake up so we can create a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. Okay, so it seems there are 500 comments so far. Let's um, uh, share this with other people so we can expand the conversation on discoveringyourcosmicself.com. Theo says, uh, healthy food for the soul. It's the only food, soul food, right? Uh, Sandra Weber says, God is love. Yes, love is another name for God or unity consciousness, the ultimate truth at the heart of creation. Maria Niembro says, big hug, big hug. Nina, you are awesome. Uh, okay, listen, I'm going to go now. Dejana uh, Martho, Martinovic, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Margaret Smith, sayonara. Sayonara. Deb Brooks says, will you ever come to Maine? You know, I used to go there a lot in the past, skiing when I lived in Boston. Haven't been for a while. Uh, Senator Cohen was a great friend of mine, but I haven't been. Maybe I should come soon. Okay. By the way, the Oprah meditation, the 20-day meditation is on, and you can check it out on uh, on um, chopracentermeditation.com and also check out our meditation library on jayo.com j-i-y-o.com okay i need to get to the airport so thank you god bless lots of love